Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Svetlana and I'm here today to share with you my experience living in Russia one year after sanctions. This is going to be a series of videos about the impact of the sanctions on daily life in Russia. But in this video, I will focus only on grocery prices of everyday items and how they have been affected by the sanctions. I want to make it clear though that in these videos I won't be discussing why sanctions exist or get into the political aspect of the sanctions, because I'm sure you're already familiar with that. My goal is to simply show you the results of the sanctions and how they affect the average Russian citizen. And you, based on what you see, can decide for yourself whether the sanctions are effective or not, or whether the Russian people are suffering too much or not enough. You're free to express any opinion you have in the comments. And now, uh, let's go to the grocery store. Today is Monday, April 3rd, and let me quickly show you the weather. This is the second month of spring already, but it looks like a winter wonderland. While in Paris, in London, everything is blooming and it feels like the real spring. In Russia, in St. Petersburg in particular, we are still dealing with winter weather. Not fun. And I'm still wearing my winter clothes and the Ugg boots. came to a grocery store that's called Plovdiv. Uh, it's a very small chain of uh, supermarkets and you've probably never even heard about it, even if you live in Russia. There are only about uh, 10 stores in St. Petersburg and I'm not sure if they have this chain in uh, any other cities of Russia. I used to live nearby, that's how I found out about this store. I don't live here anymore, but I still come here sometimes uh, just because it's my favorite. It's a pretty budget-friendly supermarket. You can find here pretty much anything you want. 99% um, of the stuff you can find in this store and only 1% uh, of products you should buy somewhere else because they might be too expensive here. Two more things before we start. One dollar today equals 78 rubles. And also, to understand the prices better, it's important to know the average salary. I'm in St. Petersburg now, and the average monthly salary in St. Petersburg is equal 75,000 rubles per month. And a median salary per month in St. Petersburg equals to 35,000 rubles. And now, when you have this information, let's begin exploring the price. Let's start with the fresh produce section since it's right at the entrance. 100 rubles for a kilo of apples. One kilo of cabbage would be 20 rubles. A kilo of these cucumbers would be 260 rubles. Red pepper, 360 for a kilo. The most expensive tomatoes, these are seasonal from Azerbaijan, 360 for a kilo. And the cheapest tomatoes from Russia, 250 for a kilo. There are also cheaper cucumbers, 190 rubles for a kilo. Bananas, 113 rubles. I was almost kicked out of the store. They told me I cannot film here, but I know I can. But the guy doesn't seem to be very approachable, so I don't really have much time. And I will try to be as fast as I can to film as much as I can because he will probably come back after me. So. <laughs> Avocados, uh, 80 rubles for one piece. Mandarins from Morocco, 160 rubles for a kilo. Argentinian apples, 90 rubles. Unwashed carrot, 30 rubles for a kilo. And washed one is 80. This one is from Russia though, this one is from Israel. Onion, 50 rubles for a kilo. Potatoes, 28 rubles for a kilo as well. A kilo of champignons, 230 rubles. And it's actually rare to see them open like this. Usually they are sold in the packs. There is grapes already. 
This one is 160 for a kilo. This one is a little bit more expensive, 280. As always, a huge selection of eggs, 109 rubles for a pack of 10, 94, 84, 190 for a pack of 20 eggs. These eggs are on promotion today, 83 rubles for a pack. A nice selection of fresh meat, different type and kinds. A kilo of ground beef is for 130 rubles. This one is my favorite section. It always looks so nice and beautiful and clean. A kilo of salmon here, of salmon steak, is 1800 rubles. Uh, salmon is probably one of the few things I wouldn't buy here because it's a little bit more expensive. But this fish, uh, one kilo of farel, is 540 rubles. That's a good price today. A small selection of oils here. A huge bottle of olive oil is 530 rubles and oil is another thing I wouldn't buy here, I would find it at a different store. And also, you see here two prices, this one, the more expensive one, and this one. This price is for those who have cards. I have a card, so I will pay this price. This price is the original price for those who don't have a card. Or here is a regular white um, tag. This is just a regular price, it's the same price for everybody. Mayo in Russia comes in packages like this. One pack would be 80 rubles. A pack of this mayo, 110 rubles. A full chicken like this uh, would be 124 rubles for a kilo. This one is uh, 1700 grams. A pack of ketchup, 99 rubles. Here is some cheese. Uh, cheese has been under sanction since 2014 and basically all the cheese that you see is uh, Russian made. A pack of this cheese, 340 rubles. This cheese was just renamed. It used to be called Poltermani and now due to sanctions they had to change their name and it's called Laplandia now. Sausages, all different types, 109 rubles for a pack. I found more cheese. This one is from Argentina because Argentina didn't put sanctions on us yet and a kilo of this cheese would be 1370 rubles uh, but a piece like this is 484. In this store there's also a nice selection of freshly made food by the store. They have their own, not bakery, how you call like um, a thing where they cook food everything looks very good all prices are for a hundred grams also they have their own bakery let's look at some prices russian made ciabatta bread uh, 70 rubles there's still a lot of coffee in russia but of course the variety is a lot a lot less now than it used to be and lavazza is very expensive now 500 rubles for a pack or 415 rubles for a pack and here's the interesting thing uh, the brand poeti is a brand new brand it used to be called paulik now uh, poeti is the new name of the paulik coffee this is a uh, 400 rubles for a pack and here are some of the leftovers of this coffee see that's how it used to be called um, 420 rubles for a pack. There are still quite a few foreign coffee brands. This one is from Netherlands, but it's a lot more expensive now than it used to be. 569 rubles for a pack. Pasta. I know uh, Barilla is famous uh, brand of pasta in Italy, but this one is made in Russia. A uh, pack like this is 90 rubles. This pasta, also made in Russia, despite the foreign name, 106 rubles. A pack of 2 kilo of flour is 130 rubles. Sugar, 1 kilo, 45 rubles. A pack of salt, almost 10 rubles. The crops is always the most important section. So, let's see. Today is a good price for buckwheat. 
Uh, one pack is 800 grams, 80 rubles. This one, 94. Pack of rice, 130 rubles. This is 900 grams. A pack of beans, 700 grams, 155 rubles. Oats, one pack, 37 rubles. Milk. Uh, this is a very famous uh, brand of milk in Russia called Prostakvashina. Not only milk, uh, all milk products in general. A pack, 70 rubles, and this is 930 milliliters. A big bottle of milk, which is almost one and a half liters, is 170 rubles. The milk in Russia is also sold in this kind of like liquid bags, <laughs> and it costs 60 rubles for a pack. Another interesting thing, uh, this brand used to be called Kellogg. You all know Kellogg, very famous brand in US and Europe as well. And now they are gone from Russia since recently. And it's just called Unicorn, but this is a uh, old Kellogg and they still have the factory where they produce this. But now it goes under the brand Lubyatova. Uh, this is the original brand that owns uh, X Kellogg now. cottage cheese that Russians cannot live without. A pack like this, 150 rubles, 129, 179. Sour cream, a pack like this, 75 rubles. We also have in Russia a sour cream that's made out of baked cream. I've never tried it, it costs 99 rubles, but I'm sure it tastes delicious. This small section, I guess, is the leftover of the Denon brand because Denon left Russia and this is probably everything they have left. There are still a lot of uh, yogurt brands, but mainly they are all produced in Russia. Here are the different candies, Russians, of course. And all these types of candies are 300 rubles for a kilo. Nutella is still here. The medium jar is 422 rubles. The huge one is 700. A small section of uh, fake cola and Fanta. Royal Cola, this is the kind I've never tried. By the way, I have the whole video of tasting different kinds of Coca-Cola. You can check it out right here if you want to. This one is 69 rubles, all of them, actually. Pilmeni, lots of pilmenis. Russians love their pilmenis. These are from Belarus, by the way. And actually, we have so many products from Belarus now, from food to clothes to some other <laughs> production and these cost 250 rubles for a pack and more pilmenis these are more expensive uh, 450 rubles for a pack as well i have them for alcoholics so many different types of beers a bottle of who garden 98 rubles love and brow 80 rubles bud 80 rubles as well this one is produced in russia by the way not in the us this brand 80 rubles for a bottle. All beers pretty much within the 80 rubles range. Lots of juice packs. Here is some pesto sauce. 235 rubles for a bottle. This one is made in Italy, it says. Jalapeno, 140 rubles for a jar. By the way guys, follow me on Instagram, it's Hair Goddess. I'm really trying hard to be active there again. For the past three years I wasn't active there at all, only occasionally was posting there something. But now I'm gonna try to be present there again, so follow me for more daily updates. Other than food in this store, there's also uh, things like this, uh, towels, pants, um, bags and all this kind of stuff, which is not that interesting, I think, for you. So today I'm gonna skip that part and not gonna film. I'm lately noticing so many different flavors of choco pie. Tell me, is it the same in your countries? 
Uh, I only tried the original one, all these new uh, kinds. I didn't get a chance to try and I'm not interested, to be honest with you. But if you're wondering, a pack of Choco Pie is 170 rubles. That's the right price. Here is the dried fruit section. For some reason, very popular in Russia. A pack of prunes, 170 rubles. A pack of dried apricot, 280 rubles. Last one for today toilet paper. This one is 200 rubles for 8 rolls. This one is 108. Just left the store and I spent 1,381 rubles which is not a lot, but I also didn't get uh, basically anything. And uh, the guy who was following me, he made me so distracted and I'm sure I forgot some of the important things. But I hope you'll forgive me for that because I was under a very stressful situation there. He was following me, watching me, just staring at me and I don't know, maybe if I spent there longer, he would call the police or something. But. I'm sure I forgot something because of that. But anyways, as you can see, the store is full. Every aisle I showed you was very full and that's how the situation is has been since the beginning of sanctions. But the important thing is Russia, of course, is not going to starve because of the sanctions because Russia has its own produce. The way the sanctions affected the grocery items is that the variety became less. There is so much less option compared to one year ago because a lot of Western brands have left the Russian market for good. And Russia started to produce more of its own, but it's not that good yet, I would say. Some of it is not as good as what uh, we lost. And now I'm going to a different store. I need to buy some chicken. I will just show you the store. It's a very small store and I will show you some prices and how they sell like meat there. So let's go. This is the area where I used to live. Right there is my old house. I feel like I live in a much better area now, but I still do miss this place sometimes. And the store where I'm going to right now is just nearby the supermarket that I just left. And I still come there from time to time because uh, they have the best chicken. I haven't found better chicken yet than what they sell in the store. That's why I come back to this area pretty much once every three months or every time I happen to be in St. Petersburg because lately I don't spend here that much time. I got everything I needed at this little store and I'm now waiting for my taxi because I'm too lazy to take a bus home and um, the taxi is not expensive in Russia so it's okay. What do you think about how sanctions affected the prices in Russian grocery store? I think that things definitely uh, gotten more expensive even since the last year and it has to do not only with sanctions but other factors as well uh, including the inflation and uh, things are a lot more expensive now that's for sure and there's a lot less selection of different varieties and uh, i'm waiting for your comments um, want to know your opinion what do you think about how sanctions affected 
Russia, Russian crisis in one year. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will see you in the next video where I will be talking only about how sanctions affected Russian shopping malls. So, see you in the next video.